everyone. Welcome to episode 54 of the Airy Knits podcast. My name is Ariel, and this is a video podcast where I talk about all the things that I have been knitting and spinning on in the past week. And today is going to be, I think it's going to be a fun video because I do have, as always, my normal progress updates, and I have a couple finished objects to share with you as well. And at the end of the video, Today, I will be talking about some of my goals and plans for next year. And yeah, it just, I'm really excited to talk about it. It's stuff that I have been thinking about and kind of planning for for a while, or at least towards the end of this year. Just kind of really excited to, yeah, have some goals for 2024 and have them actually like written out. I feel like this past year, I've had like, of some goals in mind but they weren't anything I was really like trying to stick to but this time I really want to like try and stick to my goals and have them written down and have kind of like a regular kind of progress update on them but yeah I'll get more into the details of that at the end of this video but as always for these podcast episodes, I will start off with what I am wearing today and it is also a finished object for this week. This is my Asu sweater by Ozuko, or Ozuko Knits on Instagram, and oh, I, this week was a week of like really wanting to finish things. Just looking at the pile of whips that I have, I have just really want to finish as much as I can before the end of the year, so... This sweater has been, I think, actually, like, I got a lot of progress done at the very beginning of it and then kind of slowed down on it while I did some other projects. And then I picked it back up within the past few weeks, I think, and really just, like, went real hard on the knitting for this to get it done. I was pretty close last week. I believe that I only had one more sleeve left to do. And so this past week, I just needed to finish up the sleeve and it went really quickly. I washed it, I blocked it, and now I'm wearing it and I'm really happy with it. But I do have notes on it to talk about. So before I get into the notes, the yarn I used for this is Explore Knits. Both of the colorways are Explore Knits Denali Sock Base in the colorway Bryce Canyon National Park, which is the variegated color, and Chinley, which is the tonal color. I knit size one and I used US 3 needles to knit this. And I ended up with about 35 inches in circumference. So that gives me about five inches of positive ease. So I will stand up now so that you can see how that fits on me here. So I'm just awkwardly will hold my hand, hands up like this so you can just see how that fits. My underarm is like right here. So you can see the depth on that. Here is the length on me. The length is a little bit longer than the pattern states, I believe, but it is mostly because of gauge, and I will get more into that. Uh, let me show you the back here. Hopefully you could see the back because I was turned around so I can't see in the camera what that looks like, but okay. I'm hoping that I remember all of my notes on this to share because there were a few, and again, like, I kind of, like, knit on it a lot, took a break from it, and picked it back up. So, first things first, the construction on this sweater, it's a side, it's worked sideways. This is the first time that I have knit a sweater that is worked sideways, so it was a very interesting construction for me. And it is started at this center line, so you kind of are working one color at a time. So you work from the middle front, and for me it was, I started with the variegated color and worked this way, under the arm, work the back, and then, let me turn around again, so the back, at some point you switch colors and start working the back in your second color and work towards the front, and then I did the collar after that, the neckline, and then I picked up for, to do the sleeves. And the sleeves are done in the round. 
So, sorry, going backwards. So the body is knit flat stockinette. And just because it is worked sideways, it is not worked in the round. But the sleeves are worked in the round. You pick it up like a normal sleeve and work in the round, do the decreases and do all of that. The edgings for this sweater, the cuffs for the sleeves are, the instructions are written to go down a needle size to do the cuff and it is a folded cuff, but it is not like a ribbed folded, but it's just like stockinette and then you fold it. So it's, it's a pretty clean finish. I do actually really like folded hems and ed edgings. I know some people don't, but that is what it is written for in the pattern for this pattern, for the, for the pattern. Uh, yeah, to have a folded cuff. The neckline is also a folded cuff or a folded, yeah, folded neckband, but the pattern says to do one by one rib and I started doing that. I didn't like how it looked. I just really wanted it to match what the sleeves look like. And so I just did that. So instead of one by one rib, I just did plain stockinette and then folded. So I will try and get closer to the camera for you to see that. I know I use a slightly darker color, so it might be kind of hard to see, but the neckline is also worked in Tarja knitting. And so I work the collar flat because the front color is my tonal and then the back is all of the variegated. So you can see, I believe this is the side I actually like sewn together. So this part was not knitted together, but this was the side. Although you can't, actually it might be the opposite way. This is probably the side that I sewed because it, it does look a little, a little more off. <laughs> not, not, not as nice as on this side, but that is the neckline. And then for the hem of the body, it is actually a rolled hem. So let me stand up again. So it, there is no kind of like pick up and finish any kind of way. You just do a selvage edge while you're knitting sideways and it does naturally fold. And so that is just how the edging is for the bottom of the body. I'm sure if you prefer to do something else, you could pick up stitches at the bottom and do an edging that you prefer, but I actually do like the look of the rolled hem. So I think those cover most of the basics as far as like sweater construction and all of that. And the one main thing that I had to kind of pay attention for for this pattern is the gauge. So I was, I looked more into this. I was looking more at the pattern and the recommended yarn. And I believe that the recommended yarn or the yarn that was used for the original sample was a single yarn, like a single ply yarn, which I've never knit with before, but I think that it probably has a very different gauge and it grows differently after blocking. So that is probably why my gauge was super off from the pattern. And I will eventually uh, put my gauge for like what I got on this in my Ravel Ravelry project page. I don't normally put gauge in my Ravelry project pages, but I think for this one, I will, especially because I actually, I really like the end product of this and I probably want to make another one again. And so I wanna make sure that I remember exactly what I did and what my gauge was with this kind of yarn. So, but yeah, so more details I will probably put on my project page for this, for this project. And so basically what happened with my gauge is that I needed to knit more rows in order to reach a certain measurement. And I think that that probably caused some things that were a little weird for me. For the most part, it was totally fine. A lot of the instructions were just like, knit until you reach one inch 
or you know some kind of measurement so that would be fine the main thing is that if you want your body of your sweater to be longer it's not like a top-down sweater where you can just keep knitting because you cast on the amount of stitches that is the length you would have to if your gauge is wrong or off from the pattern you would have to know your gauge and know what length you want and be able to so if so that if you need to cast on more stitches to lengthen your garment or if you want it more cropped and to decrease the amount of stitches that's probably something you would have to do and gauge swatching is probably the best for this project but it's, it's honestly not too terrible to do I think uh, especially because it really is like you really want to get that measurement right because you have to cast on a certain number of stitches and I don't think I don't I don't know I guess how you would lengthen or shorten actually I guess you could shorten by just like you could just if it was too long because it is just like a folded edge you could just fold it in more I guess but anyway uh, so those are kind of like my thoughts on that but I ended up sizing down my needles by, I think like at least two sizes to get a good gauge and it all worked out my the only problem I had was for the neckline which thankfully you can't really tell but I was having some laddering happen just because of the way that it, the casting off and how many rows I was knitting before casting off stitches to make this nice uh, rounded shape for the neck but I was able to fix it by just like picking up in a more even way for the neck and next time I make this I'll probably try and do like a sloped bind off and yeah I think that was a great idea I've had people reach out to me and tell me about the slope bind off so thank you very much and yeah so that is probably something I would do for next time but it still came out great and I like how it looks and Oh, I did have to, because again, my gauge was weird, for the sleeves, there isn't a measurement on how to, like how or when to decrease. It is written out per round, like knit a certain number of rounds and then decrease. So I had to just do some math to figure out how to get the sleeve length I want with the number of decreases, but I just had to, I just made sure that I would knit a few rounds of decreases, try it on and make sure it still fits. And I think it all worked out really well. And I really like it. I like the length of the sleeve. I think the armhole is maybe a little big, but it doesn't, as long as it doesn't feel like there's a thick piece of fabric like under my arm when I have my arms down, then I would say it's totally fine. And I'm very happy with how this feels. I just blocked it last night and so I was really like okay I hope that it's dry by the time I film today and it was I mean it was a little damp but now that I had it on for some time it's like dry now and I really like how it feels I like the drape and I really want another one it feels just very like easy to put on over anything and just very easy to wear and so I am very happy with the end result for this I think it's a great way to use to make one sweater and use two different yarn options for it and I do like I've been really into kind of pairing a variegated and a tonal together in one project and so I do really like this project or this pattern for that so that is my Asu sweater and oh and one more thing speaking about the yarn for my size and I think for a lot of the a lot of the so I knit the smallest size and I think for on the smaller sizes you could get away with knitting or just using two skeins of each color and I just think it's a great way for me I always buy or I've always kind of bought two skeins of a fingering weight yarn in a color that I like and that way I could turn it into like some kind of like short sleeve top or tank top if I needed to but it was never a sweater quantity but now I can get a sweater with two kind of like tank top or t-shirt quantities and so yeah that's one of my favorite things about this so that was a long long chat about my 
Aussie sweater, but I'm very happy with the end result and I can't wait to wear it some more. So that is what I'm wearing and that is one of my finished objects for this week. I have one more finished object and I can't believe I finished it this week. It really was a goal of mine to finish this week. I was not sure if I was going to accomplish it, but I knocked it out at the beginning of this past week. And as you probably saw as I brought it here, I finished my Cinnabar shawl. This is a pattern by Andrea Maori, and if you remember from previous videos, this is like a friend knit with some of my friends, and it just makes me so happy. Uh, okay, first things first, the main color for this is the Rerum Natura Ulysse in, I, okay, I really never want to say its name because I don't know how to say it, but it's in the description down below. It is this more natural white gray kind of color that you can see on the border here. So that's my main color. And my contrast color is actually a hand spun. It is a Corydale fiber. The colorway is sand dunes and it's from Bella Filato's Studio Fibers. And it just makes me so happy. I, yeah, oh, this is a one size pattern. I used US six needles. I did not take final measurements of this. I feel like it probably ended up a little bigger than the pattern because I think my yarn was probably just a tad bigger than the, the pattern calls for, like my hand spun, but it all turned out well. I did not run out of yarn. I was a little worried about running out of yarn towards the end of this because it is just so huge and the rows just got ginormous. And so each row really just ate up so much yarn, but I made it and yeah, I do not know the best way to even like hold this up to show you because maybe I would just have to like hold it up and then scroll it past the screen so you can just see how massive this is. So here's one side. This is like the garter stitch side. And then we switch on over to the two color brioche side. And so that is, that is the whole Cinnabar shawl and it is started right here and it's such an interesting construction because since it's asymmetrical like each section like the garter stitch, se garter stitch section and the two color brioche section increases at different rates the brioche side gets a lot bigger than the garter stitch side but it turns into like this interesting shape where it's like there's like a corner, a corner at this end, uh, like that. So really, it's so cute and it's so squishy. Like I just, it's just, and it's so warm. I've been, ever since I finished washing and blocking it, I've just been wearing it wherever I could in the house and just wrapping myself in it and it is so warm and it's it's not scratchy but it feels wooly in like the best way possible and just having such a big project with a hand spun I mean the, it's only the contrast color that's my hand spun but just seeing it all like that it just makes me really happy and I I'm just like proud of this project and very happy that it's done because I've really wanted I really wanted to finish it and have the the finished finished product of it. I love that you can see the kind of striping in the hand spun yarn because it is it was a, a multicolored braid of fiber that I spun. I'm trying to figure out which is the way you can see the colors more. It might be hard, but you can kind of see some of the striping of the color. But since it is 
the color, the different colors are very close to each other. It might be just like kind of hard to see that, but you can definitely see it more in person. I mean, maybe you can see like this part is like a little more peachy and some gray and then some like purple. And yeah, actually maybe the garter side, you can see the stripes a little bit more. Yeah. So this was really fun to knit, but <laughs> towards the end, I mean, do you want to see how long these rows were? So one row at the end went, started like here and went all the way across this garter stitch section. And then we're still going with the same row all the way, all the way across this brioche section all the way all the way here like it was so long but it was very satisfying when I bound off because this thing was just squished on my needles as if, if you watched my previous videos it was squished so this whole edge was just squished on my needles like this and so I never got to actually see what the shape was going to look like and I was not going to put these on any kind of stitch holders just to see the shape <clears throat> excuse me uh so it was just going to be as I bound off and as the stitches were able to escape from being on the needles I got to see the final shape and yeah so that was actually quite nice it took me a very long time to bind off but it was very satisfying and so it you know it kind of helped and yeah uh what else do I have to say I guess I can just show you like the two color brioche one side, kind of like that main stitch, is your contrast color. And then the other side, the main color, is your main color. But after blocking, it did kind of like open up a bit. And so you can kind of see both of those colors a bit more on each side. There's that really cool... It's hard to see again because mine is a kind of low contrast between my main color and contrast color, but you can kind of see that the main, quote, main color in the brioche section switch every so often in these like rows here. And so I thought that was also really fun and was a nice way for such a long project. It was a nice way to have like checkpoints for yourself. And it's kind of like knitting stripes. Like it's always really nice to have checkpoints like that, visual checkpoints so that you can see kind of the progress that you've made. And so, that was really nice. I I know. <laughs> so I really like the end product of this. Part of me is like, I want to make another one. And I do. I think it'd be so cute to like, I, I do love this. But I do think it'd be really cute to have one in a hand spun color that is very differing colors. And Part of me wants to make another one, but I know that there are so many other patterns out there to knit that would also go great with hand spun. So it is possible for me to make another one of these. I'll just like put it on. I'll show you how I've been wearing it around the house. It is possible that maybe in the future I would make another one, uh, but we'll see. We'll see because it did, it was a little painful towards the end because the rows got so long. But yeah, I've just been like wearing it, wrapping myself like this in it, and it is so so cozy and actually very warm like I don't I think it would almost be too warm to wear a sweater and this over especially indoors I think outdoors it'd be fine but indoors like I'm wearing a tank top and then putting this over and it actually keeps me very very warm so yeah so that is oh maybe I can hold it behind me like this would that be easier but then you can't see what's behind me but yeah that's that is my cinnabar and I'm so happy it's done it's so cozy also I again I think I've said this before but I love blocking and washing my knits because I use Sorella wool wash and I think they all smell so good so I just basically sniff all of my freshly washed knits yeah okay moving on so, okay, so those were my two finished objects this week. I feel like that they were big, big projects to finish. I mean, this was a sweater. I did only have, I think, like this much of a sleeve to finish, but 
finish. Cinnabar shawl was like a ton of knitting it felt like, so feel felt very accomplished by that. So that means I only have three other works in progress that I worked on this week, which honestly is kind of exciting because I didn't have to bring out so many things to talk about next to me. It was kind of nice because the putting it all away after I film sometimes is a little tiring. I'm like, I just want to sit down and knit again. But anyway, let's get started to talk about my works in progress. So I am bringing this one back. I did not talk about it last week, but I worked on it again this week. This is my Mackenzie shawl. It is a pattern by Sari Nordland. And let me hold it up for you. This is another like pretty big project. And so it's just, we're just working on it. We're just putting in the time to work on it. So yeah, so this is about where I'm at right now. The whole pattern will have four of these diagonal stripes. And as you can see right now, I am on the third one. And let me show you my stitch marker for progress from the last time. So, you know, I feel like putting in this amount every week about progress is progress and at some point it'll be finished. So that's kind of what I'm going with for this. It is a two color brioche project. As you can maybe tell, I've been really into the brioche projects lately. I think it's because they're just so, they feel very meditative for me to knit on and they're so, they're so soft and squishy. I keep saying the word squishy, but it really is just like, ooh, that like, that squish factor of the, uh, of, I was going to say the fiber, but like of the, just the stitch and like when it's all like, mm. anyway, uh, the yarn for this is Olivia and Oliver Fibers Classic Sock, both of these colors, in Feather, which is this white speckly color. And then Woodland, which is this brown, pinky, kind of, and speckly, variegated color. And again, I'm just enjoying working on this slowly but surely. And I am, this is a one size pattern and I am using US4 needles for this. So I most likely will not get this done by the end of the year. I don't have plans on getting this done by the end of the year just because there is a lot of knitting to do on this. And I do like having this project as just an easy go-to when I don't want to kind of work on anything else sometimes because I don't need to look at the pattern for this unless I'm getting like towards the edge of doing the, the stripe. Then I have to look at the pattern, but like right now I'm in the section where I just keep going and I don't have to look at the pattern for instructions. And so it's just a really great knit for that kind of knitting. And so that is that quick progress update on that project. Next, I have this one. This is my Pressed Flowers Cardigan by Amy Christoffers. And I've made progress. This is... Okay, first off, let me just show you the progress I made. Let me hold it up. Ta-da! So, from the last time, I actually finished, so this is my marker here. I finished the left front, like where the armhole opening is after I split for armholes. I finished the left top front. And then I sewed the shoulders together, so like the front and back together. As you can see, there is shaping done, so that's why it looks like that. So the body was all joined together, and that was really satisfying and actually be able to like try it on. So that was really cool. And then I also started on the sleeve on one of the sleeves and I am almost done with my first sleeve. It went by kind of quickly, although I will say switching from knitting this 
the flower pattern from knitting it flat to in the round was kind of annoying. I really got into the groove of knitting it, <clears throat> knitting the pattern flat because the rest, everything else, like the whole body is knit flat. And it was very intuitive. That's not, after I figured out the stitch pattern, it was very intuitive and very easy to knit, I felt like. Once we got into the round, I realized there were some yarn management things, like the yarn started getting twisted on each other again. And I just like, I just, I don't know why, I just like, can't, I don't really like it. So I had to start to get used to it, figure out a system for it to work for me. Finally, towards the end of the sleeve, got something working, which feels a lot better now, but I did have to kind of readjust in my brain how to do the stitch pattern in the round because I think part of it is like when you're, this is mosaic knitting, and when you knit this stitch pattern flat, you only work with one strand at a time, and so you would do, you know, either your main, let's say like you, your main color. You would knit your main color from one end and then back. And then switch to your contrast color, which is right there. And then one row and then back. But when you're in the round, you knit two rounds, which makes sense because you are knitting two rows before you switch. But I think in my mind, like flat, it makes sense because you're just going back to where your yarn is waiting. But for this one, you're in the round and then we reach back, you're like, oh, the other yarn is there. But you're like, no, 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 I have to knit one more round. And you just kind of have to keep track of that a little more. Also, there's a lot more purling that happens when you're knitting in the round versus when you're knitting flat because there are some rows where you're really just like purling and that's kind of how you get like that textured stitch. It's a purl stitch, but the way that it is, I guess the way that it works when you're knitting flat is that on those purl rounds, you're actually knitting on the wrong side. So you're just doing the knit stitch. But in the round, you're always, the right side is always facing you. So pretty much like every other round, you're gonna be purling for a lot of the stitches. So I also had to get used to that, but we're getting used to it. Thankfully, the way that this pattern kind of works is you really have to finish the body before you pick up four sleeves. And so it's not like I would have to go back to knitting the pattern flat and have to readjust to getting the stitch pattern flat again. You really just do it all flat and then you just do it in the round for two of the sleeves. So I really am almost done with the sleeve and I think I might just have to do the cuff left or maybe one more flower, maybe one more flower round. I timed myself how long it takes me to do one flower round and I think it was a little over 30 minutes and so I think we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, about like 10 rounds of flowers and so I think, I mean, that's about five hours. It would be a little over five or over five hours, but, but yeah, that's one sleeve, almost done. Then I only have one more sleeve and then the neck, neckband, collar, neckband, button band, then we're almost done. So that's really exciting. And I'm trying to think if I have anything else to say about this. This is, potentially the next project I am going to try and finish before the end of the year. We will see. I keep I keep adding to the list of things that I want to finish before the end of the year. And now that I finished the sweater I'm wearing and the cinnabar shawl, I'm like, what else can I finish before the end of the year? It feels like it's coming up so quickly. So I do think though that my focus for the next week will be this cardigan because I think it'd be so cute. I mean, it, it is gonna, it is cute as, as it looks right now, but like to have it finished, I am really excited for it. And now that I can see how it looks with like a sleeve almost done, like it's getting me really excited to have it done. So yeah, I realized I did not say anything about the yarn I used for this. So yarn I'm using, main color, which is the dark green here, it is, also the hem here, if you want to see what it looks like just by itself. It is Dererum Natura Ulysse in the colorway 4A. 
and I really like this yarn. Like, if you didn't notice, I it's the same yarn, the Duro Natura, but just a different color that I use in my Cinnabar, and I really like it. So I really feel like I, I want to use more of this yarn in future projects. I just, ugh, I just love how it feels. So, but anyway, so yeah, so that's my main color for this. And then my contrast color is another hand spun. It is a super fine merino fiber in the colorway Paper Kites from Nest Fiber. And I just, I love knitting with it. I think the color changes are really fun. It's not, it's so interesting because just looking at how the colors looked in the fiber before it was spun and then how it was spun, like how it looked in the skein. And, oh, I just wound up my second, I spun two skeins of my contrast color for this. And I just this morning wound up my second skein. It just, it looks so fun. But yeah, just seeing it actually knit up and how the colors change is so interesting to me. The color changes are pretty quick. They're a lot quicker than something like uh, from Spin Cycle, they're dyed in the wool, which have a lot longer color changes. This one, they are pretty quick. So like within each flower, there are like multiple color changes in them. But I actually think I really like it. And the, the way that I've been spinning a lot of my color changing fiber uh, or multicolored fiber is a fractal spin. And so I've been very, it's just very interesting for me to see how the fractal spin, like the way the colors change work up in different, in different ways and different patterns. And so that I can, you know, if I like it, like keep spinning my yarn that way, or if I don't like experiment with something, something different. And so this whole time I've just been like really fascinated with how the hand spun has been working up as far as like the color changes. So yeah, this is, let me show you back too, because it's just all, all flowers. And yeah, so that's been really fun. And oh, I am knitting size one. I'm using US five needles for the main parts of the cardigan and US three for the ribbing. So that is my update on this project. And then I only have one other project to talk about which is my Turtle Dove Shawl by Sari Nordland. And this is a mystery knit along that she is hosting. And so I believe that it goes on for four weeks and we just, so each week you get a clue for this shawl. And this past, I think it's, so it's on Wednesdays. This past Wednesday, we got clue three. And the way that this shawl is, it's a, a triangle shawl. And so it starts off at one end, increases, and then starts to decrease. And yeah, the pattern, I mean, the clues are at some point, or so now that we're decreasing, we've basically seen the entire pattern. And so we're just decreasing in the same pattern. Like it's nothing new in terms of like a new design. Uh, the cables are still the same cables, same bobbles, but I've really been liking having kind of like, again, like some kind of like checkpoint into these projects. So I did finish with clue three this week. So if you don't want to see what it looks like, uh, look away now. So yeah, I will be showing what I have so far right now. Okay. Here it is. Oh, maybe now, now that it's longer, I can show it sideways. Here it is. So you can see my stitch marker here. So this was the end of clue two. And so clue three was worked, yeah, from here all the way to here. And so you can see on this side is where the triangle is. And pretty much, yeah, clues one and two reached us or got us to the halfway point, and so now we're decreasing to the other uh, side. But yeah, I'm still loving, I actually, I this is a really cute pattern, I think. I really like the bobbles and like the wavy, the wavy 
cable. Would you call this cable? Actually, what would you call this? But I like this wavy twisted stitch design in there. The cables are pretty fun. I like this cable more than this one. But overall, I just think they look really cute together, like the whole, all of it. So it's another project I'm excited to have the, the end product of. And I really am happy with my yarn choice as well. So I am using Woolberry Fiber Co. for both of my, both of the yarn. Uh, the non-fluffy yarn I'm using is the Berry Sport Base in the colorway Creamsicle, which is a peachy, creamy color. It's variegated with just like occasional pops of like a brighter or just, yeah, just like a darker orange and some pink in there. And then for, I'm using a Surrey, so I'm holding it together. The Berry Surrey base in the colorway Coral, which is just a really, I love this colorway. It's a very pink peach color. And all together, it looks like this. And I really like how soft it looks and the Surrey really helps Kind of, you can see some of the variegation in the sport weight yarn, like over here, but I really like that the Suri kind of just like helps to like blend it all. And yeah, so I am very happy with my yarn choices for this. I think that I didn't check my gauge for this because it is like a mini shawl. And so I don't think it's too much of a problem if I'm off. The only thing that would be a problem is if I like ran out of yarn. But I think my gauge is probably a little big because I am using a sport, a sport weight yarn plus a Surrey and the pattern calls for fingering weight and I think she uses a mohair. So yeah, but other than that, like I really like how it feels and how it's turning out. So yeah, so that is the update on that one. Next week should be the final clue, clue number four and I'm planning on finishing that as soon as I can, as soon as the, the, that part of the pattern comes out. So yeah, this is my first mystery knit along and I know it's not really like, uh, it's not too much of a mystery, I guess, because Sar Sari has been posting on Instagram like what it looks like and pretty much the sections are the same as you work through it. So it's not like the Stephen West mystery knit alongs where I think each clue is really like something completely different from the other clues. But I will say I really enjoy this way of doing it because even though it's not really like a surprise every week, I, I again, like having like checkpoints on working on it and it's kind of like a fun thing to do. Oh, I'm also knitting this with a whole bunch of friends. We're all like, like the Seattle friends and our Bay Area friends friend group is like we're all kind of working on this and so it's really fun to see everyone's progress and different yarn choices and so it just all feels really fun to work on it together and like because there are checkpoints like no one can not that it matters if anyone gets ahead but it's kind of like we're all in it together at the same time and so that makes it pretty fun and it's a small project so yeah it just feels really like cute and fun so yeah, that is all I have for my knitting whips. I do have a quick update on my spinning because don't worry, I have still been spinning. I still love spinning. So I finally finished this morning my uh, spinning my singles of the Yarn Addict Co. BFL and Silk Fiber. The colorway is Autumn in the City, which is really cute, very holiday Christmassy feeling kind of colorway so I think it worked out perfectly. It's a green, red, and brown kind of like dark color and this was the first half. I'm spinning this as a two-ply fractal in the same way I've been spinning all my other fiber but I've really been enjoying doing it this way so I'm going to keep doing it until I feel like I want to do something different. But yeah, this one was already done a while ago and I just finished my second half, which has the shorter color changes. And I don't know, I've not been good with like, 
you can tell that this one has a there's it's a lot bigger than this one I've not been good I, I'm or maybe I got super lucky in my first spins where I split the fiber pretty evenly but I've been getting a lot more on one side one half so that's been kind of interesting lately but it's not really a big deal but yeah just something interesting for me this fiber was a little difficult for me to spin in the beginning I think because of the silk this is my first time using a BFL silk or just anything with silk in it like spinning so I think it got I it took me some time to get used to it because it did feel a little slippery in certain sections I think especially the sections where it was just like the silk fiber, it just would slip away. But I do feel like I got used to it towards the end. And so I definitely would spin with this kind of fiber again. I'm very curious to see how this looks plied. And so that is probably what I will be working on tomorrow. I probably would ply them today, but I have... I didn't know if having them rest on the bobbins or just resting in general even was like worth it, but there's been some times where I finish plying my singles and then I immediately go to ply and then other times where I've just let them rest. Maybe not intentionally, but just because I had other things so they ended up resting and then I plied and it actually is a, a lot easier. I don't know if in the end it looks or feels any different, but plying just becomes a lot easier if the, the singles have rested, I feel like. So, and that just means, I think, just leaving them here and not like touching them at all. So I will, I finished, pl I finished spinning this, this morning and so probably tomorrow morning I will start plying. And I'm really excited to see how this looks plied. It is noticeably shiny because of the silk and so I'm just really curious to see how that looks in like the final final yarn for this so next time I talk on this podcast I will probably have a finished hopefully washed and plied skein of new yarn so and this will be the last the last thing I spin for this year it's just planning wise I, I like that I like I like the idea of not having something kind of lingering on my spinning wheel before the new year and because I also just want to have like a new spin at the very beginning of the year. So this will be my last spin for the year. I won't have to wait too long before the new year. So I feel I feel very happy with that. And I, oh yes, so that is all I have to talk about for my works in progress. That section went a lot longer than I thought it would, but I'm hoping that this next section won't be too much longer, but this is next. I want to talk about my goals and some plans for 2024. And so, yeah, I just have a lot. I think even from the beginning of this year, like 2023, I've had some ideas on goals and things that I wanted to do, but I never really wrote them down. They were kind of just like in my head as a nice to do. But for this year, I want to be a bit more accountable for some of these goals. And I don't want it to become like a stressful thing, but I definitely just want to see like how I'm doing and have an actual concrete way to like track my progress and see some numbers. So yeah, I just thought I'd share with you what some of my goals will be. And I will talk about them at the beginning of next year as well and probably give some progress updates on some of them as well. So I'm hoping I have some fun ones and I have some ones that are probably like very normal for people to have but and I will probably have even more goals as like 2024 goes on but yeah okay we'll just we'll just get started. So a main goal for me for next year is I want to have a big stash of yarn and so I would like to kind of see I don't want my stash to get really that much larger so I would like to use more yarn than I bring in next year and with 
that in order to keep me accountable and to track this. I also want to keep track of all of the yarn in my stash and this is something I haven't done in the past. Like I don't, I never had a spreadsheet of all the yarn that I have and you know when I got it how many skeins I have. So I started kind of doing an inventory of all of my yarn and that way it'll help me just yeah just keep track of what I have and also be able to for my goal of using more yarn than I bring in like actually being able to count that and make sure that 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 is happening for me so those are a couple kind of like the big idea thing goals for next year and with that I have been for the past couple years doing some yarn clubs and some subscriptions so in order to help me to use use more yarn in my stash than yarn that I buy and bring in that is like new I will only be and I say only I am anyway so the only subscriptions that I want to be a part of next year is the Woolberry Collective, which I am already in. I think that I have been in it for at least a year, maybe a year and a half, and I've really been enjoying it. So yes, I want to stay in the Woolberry Collective and the Nest Fiber Monthly Club. So I feel like that feels good for me. One is yarn and one is fiber, and so feel like fiber doesn't really count as yarn. It is another thing that I want to keep track of, but yeah, I feel I feel like next year, I hope no one comes up with great monthly club ideas, but I would like for my only subscriptions next year to be Woolberry Collective and the Nest Fiber Monthly Club. And with that, on like similar lines on that, I want to really try to not buy any mystery yarn next year and part of this is again I would like to limit the amount of yarn that I buy next year to some extent I will buy yarn next year I am not on a like no buying type of thing but I would like to limit it and so I I just don't think buying mystery yarn is the Best way for, like, if I'm going to limit how much yarn I buy, I want it to be something very, like, something I know that I will really like. And not to say that I haven't liked the mystery yarn that I've gotten this year or last year, but, yeah, I just feel like I want to be very intentional about the yarn I buy. And so, no mystery yarn, which means no kind of mystery clubs, no, you know, stuff like that. So, no mystery yarn next year. And then, okay, with that, I have some, like, fun fun kind of goals and plans for next year. So, I want to use, I was, when I was doing my inventory of my yarn, I actually have a lot more sock sets than I thought that I did. So, I would like to see if I could use 12 sock sets next year. And the reason I chose, the, 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 the reason I chose the number 12 is because I, okay, so some of my friends also have, like, a sock set type of goal for next year and I think 12 seems doable because if I think about it in terms of like one sock a month it feels doable uh so I feel like yeah using 12 sock sets but I'm saying that like 12 sock sets and not 12 socks because I, there is a pattern that I want to make that is a shawl that uses four sock sets, like it includes the minis, and I want that to count in, in my, like, use of sock sets. So, 12 sock sets doesn't have to be socks, but just to use, like, the full skein and the mini skein to some extent. So, it could be socks, could be something else, but yeah, so 12 sock sets I want to use next year. I also want to use all of my Woolberry Rewind yarn that I got this past year. So this year, Woolberry did a Woolberry Rewind collection like throughout the year. So every month, she would bring back 
a colorway and have it for a small pre-order. And I bought each of them this year. So 12 different colorways. Actually, some months she had like multiple colorways. As long as you like got one, it would like count for that month. And I think for December I got two, like it was the red, it was the red yarn. I got two of the red. So, but anyway, I didn't knit anything this year with any of the Woolberry Rewind yarn that I got. And so I thought it would be really fun for next year. I, I originally had the idea of like matching it with the month. So for like 2023 January colorway, which was Stash, I would knit something with it in January of 2024 and kind of do that for each month. But there were, like, are some that, I don't know, I don't wanna be like that restrictive even though it seems like it'd be kind of fun. So I just have a general goal for using all of the Woolberry, Re Woolberry Rewind yarn that I got this year next year. And with that too, similar to like how I'm thinking about the 12 sock sets, I feel like the Woolberry yarn, because it was about like one colorway per month, I feel like doing one of those projects per month could also be doable, maybe. Because some, I didn't actually buy too many sweater quantities of each color. Some of it were just like smaller amounts, like a tank top or a sock or something like that. And so, yeah, 12 projects throughout the year using the Woolberry Rewind yarn seems doable. So that is one kind of goal or plan I have for next year. I also have, I can't forget about my spinning. So I want to spin at least four ounces of fiber a month. That comes out, it's about like one braid a month and that's like one skein a month. And I think that it is also doable. Although as I like keep adding these smaller projects all together, doing them, all of them a month might become, I don't know, I have no idea, but I just have some of these ideas. I won't be really sad if I don't reach any of these like making goals, but they're just ones I wanna put out there and just like see how it goes. But yeah, spin at least four ounces of fiber a month, which is about one braid. And because I'm part of the Nest Fiber Monthly Club, that is how much I am getting every month is like one four ounce bag of fiber. And so if I can like keep up with the spinning and like gaining of fiber, I feel like that, that would be that would be good and keep me on track and also to not end up with a huge fiber stash as well as my yarn. So yeah, so that's also something I want to see how that goes. I have, oh, okay, this other one. I have two very old whips in just like timeout. I have not touched them in so long. I want to say maybe a year. And one is a like bulky blanket of just like scrap yarn. And the other is a flower shawl. I've talked about both of them on the podcast a long time ago. And I'm just like never touched them again. And it would be really nice. I wanted to finish them this year and I'm like, oh, it's the end of December now and it's not going to happen. So for next year, I would really like to finish those two just to get them done. My two oldest whips. So that's another goal. I also want to knit at least five patterns from Sorry Nordland's book. And because I love that book, I love a lot of the patterns. I like more than five of the patterns in the book. So yeah, I just want to make sure that I am knitting things. I just want to make sure I'm knitting things from the book because I feel like I bought the book. I love almost all the patterns in it. And yeah, so I'm setting myself, I'm just putting a number out there for myself. Five patterns. Some of them are socks. And so I feel like that could also, you know, I can combine things like, my sock using a sock set, use a pattern from the book, you know, I can combine it that way too. So but yeah, knit at least five patterns from Sorry Nordland's book. And then another one I have too is I would like to hand dye a sweater quantity of yarn and knit something with it. So I have been kind of dyeing a lot of yarn and fiber lately, or not a lot, but just I've been doing it and 
I really enjoy doing it, but I just haven't been knitting too much with my hand dyed yarn. I do have like two skeins of like a color or one skein of a color here and there just because I am testing out colors and just experimenting and so I'm not, you know, dyeing a whole sweater quantity of a, a color that I'm just like experimenting with. But I think it'd be really awesome to finally like make a color, feel really good about it and dye a sweater quantity of it and actually knit with it. So yeah, that's another goal of mine for next year. I think that I have a lot more that I've probably thought of and just forgot to write down, but I feel like those are, it's actually kind of a long list, but they all make me very excited for next year. I have a lot of plans for next year and it makes me very excited. I think, I'm hoping that it didn't sound overwhelming to any of you, but for me, it just makes me really excited about all of the things that I want to make for next year because I love knitting, I love spinning, and I love dyeing yarn and fiber. So yeah, so that is all I have for right now for my goals and plans for 2024. Next week's video, I do want to talk about just like do a recap of 2023. I think that that would be really fun to do. So next week, I will be just talking about kind of just like, yeah, thoughts about 2023, about yarn I've bought, about things I've done, the things that I've made. And yeah, just do a quick little recap at the end of like a normal podcast video. So that'll be next week. And don't worry, because I will, this won't be, the recap is not a everything I've made kind of video. I will be making that separate like the everything I've made in 2023, where I show you everything I've made in 2023, that will be its own separate video. It will not be part of a podcast video because it will be so long, but that will come later on in January. So I just wanted to give you a heads up on what is what I have planned for just the next few videos I have uh, for, for this channel. Uh, but with that, that is all I have to talk about today. I hope that you have all been doing well and that you are, you know, getting ready for the new year or, you know, finishing up things you want to finish before the year ends. And I hope none of you are too stressed out by that. I actually really do like New Year's. I think it's like my favorite. It is actually my favorite holiday. And... Yeah, I'm actually really looking forward to it. I'm very happy. There's a lot of exciting things I think happening next year. So, and so many good things to reflect on for 2023. So yeah, look out for next week's video for my recap. And thank you all so much for watching and continuing to watch me. I could not do this without all of your kind words and support and yeah. As always, I love reading your comments down below. I do, I know I take a while to respond, but I really do enjoy reading them. And when I hear you talk about things that you're working on, I love hearing about that. And if you have anything you'd like for me to talk about in my recap of 2023, in next, in next, next week's video, sorry, in next week's video, let me know in the comments down below as well. And I will get those questions answered or discussed and all of that. So with that, I hope you all have a good rest of your day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!